Jan. It's really kind of fun to be here this evening, sitting in, as Jan said, for Carrie Frumpkin, who is enjoying a well-deserved bit of time off. Um, and so tonight, live from WFMT, is pleased to welcome Kim Floishas and Heidi Meyer, flutist and pianist well-known to the Chicago area. And they are here in the Levin Performance Studio with us. Kim and Heidi have been collaborating musically for well over 20 years, and Kim is a member of the Silver Rose Flute Guitar Duo, as well as a founding member of the Sapphire Woodwind Quintet, an all-female quintet specializing in presenting works by female composers. The first three pieces on the program tonight are by female composers to reflect her commitment to that. Kim also performs traditional Arabic music on the Egyptian Ney, as a member of the Chicago Arabic Music Ensemble. And Heidi is well known around the Chicagoland area as a teacher and a performer. Their recital tonight holds an international array of music. We have pieces by Debussy and Vaughan Williams, as well as the Georgian composer, Otar Taktekishvili. And from our own country, they'll play works by Undine Smith-Moore and William Grant Still, and towards the end of our program, a piece by the New Yorker Gary Shocker. Before we begin, we would love to let you know that video of tonight's broadcast can be found at WFMT.com and also on WFMT's Facebook and YouTube channels. And if you're on the go and you can step away from your terrestrial radio and stay tuned by activating WFMT's app on your smartphone or tablet. And so on to the first piece on our program this evening. The French Impressionist, composer Lily Boulanger, packed a lot into a very short life. Born in Paris in 1893, she studied with her older sister, the spectacular musical mentor Nadier Boulanger, as well as with Gabrielle Fauré. At 21, she became the first woman to win the prestigious Prix de Rome. But by 24, she had succumbed to the ill health that plagued her since she was a child prodigy. Lily Boulanger's very lovely brief nocturne dates from when she was just 18. Sometimes we'll hear it played on the violin, but you can listen for a tiny quote from the afternoon of the fawn in this piece. Let's listen to that music now, and here to play it are flutist Kim Floishas and pianist Heidi Meyer.
What a beautiful way to start off live from WFMT this evening. That was a nocturne, as fleeting and beautiful as the life of its comp composer, the French Impressionist Lily Boulanger. And we heard that performance courtesy of our guest artists this evening, Kim Floyshaus, flute, and Heidi Meyer, piano. Coming up, we have music by another French composer, a woman who was almost a contemporary of Lily Boulanger, had Boulanger lived more than a quarter century. Kim, tell us about Claude Arieux and her son, Atine. I know it was written in Marseille under German occupation, but you hear sunshine and pleasantness in this music. Yes, um, this piece you would expect to be dark and um, hopeless, but instead we get this optimistic, wondrous, brilliant major um, sonata that just intricately weaves between the piano and the flute. Sometimes just measure by measure we're trading off melody. Uh, it's just inextricably entwined melodies. Um, so it's just a lovely little breath of fresh air in, that was written in a very dark time period. And I, I think it's a treasure we, you don't hear very often. Um, and I'm really glad we can play it tonight for you. You are something of a specialist in women composers, I think, through your work with the Sapphire Wind Quintet. How did you find her work? Well, I originally discovered the quintet um, that she wrote um, that my Sapphire Winds performs quite frequently. It's a lovely piece as well. Um, but this one doesn't get as performed as often, but uh, it's, a, it's a gem, I think. And, and I was just looking at what else she had written and, and found this. and decided it needed to be heard tonight. Well, let's hear it then. Here now is Sonatine by Claude Aru, and it's a work in three movements, Allegro Moderato, Andantino, and Presto, and it's to be played for us on live from WFMT by Kim Floyshaus, flute, and Heidi Meyer, piano.
seemingly composed of sunshine and light. That was Sonantine, a piece by the French composer Claude Arieux, who lived from 1903 to 1990. And we heard a performance here in live from WFMT by flautist Kim Floyshaus and pianist Heidi Meyer. And so we turn to music by another 20th century composer, this time the American Undine Smith Moore, who was pretty much the same timeline. Um, she lived from 1904 to 1989. Kim, as a founding member of the Sapphire Wind Quintet, uh, tell us again about Undine Smith Moore and your quest to showcase great women composers. This, uh, I actually discovered this piece a different way. Um, I. Uh, often do kind of themed recitals with my students and during the pandemic years we had a recital that was all music by african-american composers and i have one student who um, has a sort of family band the the sister plays the cello and the mother plays the piano um, and so i was looking for a piece for them to do together during the pandemic and i discovered this one and they ended up playing a movement from it and it was sitting in my pile waiting for the rest of the piece to play. I think it's a gem, again, um, that doesn't get a lot of playtime. But um, she was considered the dean of black women composers, um, granddaughter of slaves, but went on to just compose over 100 pieces. Only 26 were published in her lifetime. So she's very um, deserving of more playtime, I think. She's a wonderful composer. Um, she was a renowned educator as well, and we just owe so much to her. But this is um, a wonderful piece based on um, black spirituals, and I thought, and with Juneteenth coming up, that this would be a wonderful um, piece to highlight on the program. And we'll go from that piece, and afterwards we'll hear a work by William Grant Still, mm -hmm. who also had a, a similar honorific. Yes, yes. So he, it's interesting. She was the dean of black women composers, and he is considered the dean of African-American composers. Um, and uh, this is a wonderful piece uh, called Summerland that we'll be playing that was originally a part of a three-movement work for um, solo piano that um, has now been just arranged many different ways, and this is um, one of um, Still's arrangements uh, of Summerland. It's perfect for a June recital, I think, and it's lovely, so, um, yeah. Well, let's um, hear that music now, then. Um, for this performance of Undine Smith-Moore's Afro-American Suite, flutist Kim Floyshaus and pianist Heider, Heidi Meyer, they're going to be joined by Ruth Mudge. She's the assistant principal cellist of the Elmhurst Symphony. This work dates from 1969, and it does incorporate several African-American spirituals over the course of four movements. Some of the melodies you might recognize include Nobody Knows the Trouble I See, Lord. Brothers, will you pray for me and help me to drive old Satan away? I heard the preacher of the elder preaching the word of God. Who is that yonder? Oh, it looks like my Lord coming in a cloud. And for that piece, Kim will be playing the alto flute. And finally, we'll hear Shout All Over God's Heaven. Here now, music of Undine Smith Moore, performed on live from WFMT.
Dean Smith Moore found inspiration in a set of spirituals when she composed her Afro-American suite in 1969, a beautiful set of pieces performed for us here on Live from WFMT by Kim Fleischhaus, flute, and Ruth Mudge, cello, and also Heidi Meyer on piano. One more short piece honoring Juneteenth comes our way now, and it is called Summerland for Flute and Piano, and it's by William Grant Still. The work dates from around 1930 and was originally composed as the second movement of a piece called Three Visions for Solo Piano. And we're going to hear that movement now, Summerland, and it's to be played for us again by Kim Fleischhaus and Heidi Meyer. Exceptionally beautiful music there, written by William Grant Still when the American composer was about 35 years old. And it was performed on this edition of Live from WFMT by flutist Kim Fleischhaus and pianist Heidi Meyer. 
I'm Louise Frank, and I'm sitting in here for the very happily vacationing Carrie Frumpkin. And coming up, we'll hear Heidi and Kim in more works for piano and flute. But first, we're going to take a short break. And for that, I'll hand things back to Jan Weller. Jan? Jan. It's Louise Frank here, and I am sitting in for Carrie Frumpkin. And tonight on Live from WFMT, our guests are longtime collaborators and good friends, flutist Kim Fleischhaus and pianist Heidi Meyer. Kim is also a founding member of the Sapphire Wind Quintet, and she seems to find no shortage of performance opportunities here in and around Chicago, from full-fledged, honest-to-goodness performances to house concerts with the web-based platform Group Muse. Kim, I've been watching Group Muse for quite a while, mm -hmm. and I'm fascinated. What is Group Muse? And explain to our listeners how they can get involved oh, at groupmuse.com. Yeah, yeah, groupmuse.com. Um, so Group Muse is a worker and musician-owned cooperative that seeks to uplift artists and strengthen the broader community bonds through live intimate performances of historically rooted music. Um, and what that looked like in the pandemic for us was live stream concerts from our living room, which kept us afloat and we were really grateful for that. But now you can have a intimate chamber music performance in your home whenever you want by going to groupmuse.com and um, deciding to be a host and um, we can bring this lovely music to you whenever you want. So it's, it's just an amazing um, new, new thing that's come about in the last few years, and we're really grateful for it. I think it started in New York a couple of years even before the pandemic yes. hit, mm -hmm. um, but it certainly was a lifeline for so many people. Very much so. Uh, before, yeah. during, and yeah, we hope for a long <laughs> time. Um, but back to the music at hand. Mm. The next piece you've brought us is by the Georgian composer Otar Taktakishvili. He studied with Shostakovich and wove like Georgian folk melodies and music from the Caucasus into his works. Mm. Yet another very melodic voice from the 20th century. Who was he and how did you come to appreciate his music? 
Um, I first was given this piece during my undergrad at Northwestern. I studied with Walford Kajal and Richard Graff, really grateful to have had them for my teachers. And um, they, they were good at digging up. <laughs> but this is a standard in the flute repertoire, of course. This is actually the piece that he's best known for um, of all his works. But there's not a lot of scholarly research in English that's been done on him. So we don't know a lot about his life. But he, he was a friend of Shostakovich, lifelong friend, and studied with him as well. Um, and as you mentioned, he incorporated his Georgian, Georgian folk tunes into his music quite a bit. But he has a, a, Russian, a very different Russian sound than Shostakovich and Prokofiev because he was writing at a time where they were a little bit more um, insulated from the other European composers. Shostakovich had a lot of, of um, uh, influence from the rest of the world, and, and Taktakishvili did not. Uh, so there's just a very unique language that he wrote with. Um, he actually wrote the Georgian national anthem while he was still in college, <laughs> and went on to have a lot of uh, positions in government as well. He was the Minister of Culture for the Georgia Republic. He won a Lenin Prize um, and uh, was on the electoral committee for the International Tchaikovsky Competition for several years as well. So he was, he was quite a name in, Geor in the Georgia, Republic of Georgia. Um, we just don't know a lot about him here. So, um, well, we're going to now, we are going we? To Tell us uh, about the piece you're going to play. So this is an amazing sonata. It's kind of a tour de force. Um, there are 38 super seas in a row, pianissimo in the end of the first movement. So flutists will appreciate that. Um, it's that's a, a big challenge, and it's just it's really fun to play. There's very singable melodies all the way through. Very powerful flute writing, but you will hear that Soviet voice for sure in this, and it's just a, a very nice addition to the program, I think. So. Well, in that case, here now is that sonata for flute and piano by Otar Tak Takishvili. And our players, once again, are flutist Kim Floyshaus and pianist Heidi Meyer. And you're listening to them on live from WFMT.
The Georgian composer Otar Taktakishvili counted Dmitry Shostakovich among his mentors and friends, and you can pretty much hear the influence of that at times in the final movement of his 1966 sonata for flute and piano. And that's music we've just heard here on Live from WFMT in a wonderful performance by Kim Flauschaus and Heidi Meyer. On your musical tour you're taking on, on us on tonight, Heidi, we come now to Claude Debussy, and there's a tall but worthy tale behind the epigraph antique, uh, kind of a good-natured scheme from <laughs> Debussy and his friend Pierre-Louis. Care to fill us in? Sure. So Debussy had a friend, Pierre-Louis, and he published a lyric cycle that he said was based on poems written on a tombstone um, of a, uh, that, that were eulogizing a 6th century BC ancient Greek beauty named Bilitis. And it was met to great acclaim, but shortly after the publication of his Chanson de Bilitis, they were exposed as a fraud, a harmless fraud, and that in fact Pierre Louis was the poet himself. Uh, but it didn't deter Debussy from going on to write four compositions based on this poetry, uh, six epigraph antiques that was originally for piano four hands, and then later he made a solo piano version of it. Chanson de Bilitis, which was for soprano and piano, and then a, a piece that has mostly been lost now for a narrator, two flutes, two harps, and Celesta. The Celesta part has been lost, unfortunately. Um, but this is an arrangement by Carl Lenski that we'll be performing tonight for flute and piano that is mostly taken from the original um, piano four hands version, although some of the material is taken from the Chanson de Bilitis. And it is just typical, breathtaking Debussy at his finest. So, One can forgive him for perhaps giggling late into the night over many glasses of absinthe with his friend. <laughs> Uh, the work uh, is in six parts, and I'll name them in Anglais. Uh, they are for the invocation of Pan, god of summer wind, for a nameless tomb, for an auspicious night, for the dancer with antique symbols, for the Egyptian woman, and thankful for the morning rain. Here once more are flutist Kim Floyd and pianist Heidi Meyer, live from WFMT.
The world was a very different place when Claude Debussy completed Billy T. Seek's epigraph antique in July of 1914. And that wonderful performance by Kim Floyshaw's flute and Heidi Meyer piano brings to a close this portion of Live from WFMT. But do stay with us. We'll be right back for a final lap and more music from these fine artists after a short break. For now, though, let's head back to Command Central and Jan Weller at the helm. Jan. I am sitting in for Carrie Frumpkin, which is great because he is deserved, uh, enjoying some very well-deserved time away, and I get to be here in the Levin studio with some incredibly wonderful musicians and to share their performance tonight with all of you. And by the way, you can stream video of this broadcast at WFMT.com and over WFMT's Facebook and YouTube channels. That's live now, but I believe it's going to be up for a little while after that, so you can go back for a reprise if you're interested. Coming up next, Kim Floyshaus and Heidi Meyer have brought us a piece by a composer about whom Maurice Ravel once exclaimed something like, uh, he is the only one of my students that doesn't write my music that individual voice that Ravel was referring to, of course, is the English composer Rayfawn Williams, who, by the way, turns out to have been something like a great nephew of Charles Darwin. Kim, before the broadcast, you were telling me how this suite de ballet remained undiscovered. Nobody knew about it until after Von Williams' death in 1958? Correct. Um, he, uh was believed maybe to have written it sometime between 1913 and 1924, but it, it was just undiscovered laying around until he passed away. So that's a wonderful, wonderful suite. Really has flavors of English folk music as well as dances from the 16th and 17th century. Yes, yes. So he was uh, lifelong friends with Gustav Holst, and together the two of them roamed the English countryside during industrialization and kind of gobbled up these wonderful folk songs before they disappeared and archived them. So we have a wonderful collection. I think they collected well over 800 folk songs. 
uh, for us to enjoy. And of course, he used that as material in his music, but he also was a real big fan of music of the 16th and 17th centuries. So this piece is his, his modern language mixed with, you have a gavotte and a passe um, mixed in there, two French court dances and a humoresque, and then this lovely improvisation. Um, so it's just kind of pulls all those elements of who he is together. And it's, yeah, I love it. <laughs> The Ballet Suite by Von Williams Brims with his unique musical language. And we're going to hear that piece now, The Ballet Suite, as our live from WFMT broadcast continues with another performance by Kim Floyshaus Flute and Heidi Meyer Piano. Thank you. 
That ballet suite by Ray von Williams seems to have been composed around 1913 for the French flutist Louis Fleury. The manuscript, however, was unknown until it was discovered sometime after von Williams' death in 1958. And thank goodness it came to light, and thank goodness that we got to hear it here this evening, courtesy of that performance by flutist Kim Fleischhaus and pianist Heidi Meyer. Kim and Heidi have one more selection for us this evening, and it's a work by Gary Shocker, a prominent New York-based flute player and a prolific composer of music for that instrument. He wrote a piece called Regrets and Re Resolutions, Regrets and Resolutions, in 1986 on a commission honoring the 80th birthday of a New Yorker who left something of a lasting impression on the musical lives of many, from uh, people who enjoy hearing performances to some pretty prominent then rising artists. Kim, you want to fill us in? Sure. So Mortimer Levitt was a haberdasher back in the day, men's clothing entrepreneur, and he made a fortune at that uh, rags to riches kind of story. <laughs> rags, um, rags yeah. to riches. <laughs> really, yes. <laughs> Literally. Um, but uh, he was a very big patron of the, of the arts in New York, and he helped launch many careers of young budding artists, among them Emmanuel Axe, Pinkas Zuckerman, um, and just gave countless opportunities to young artists at the start of their careers. And he started a foundation, the Levitt Foundation, that believed that all people, regardless of their economic background, should have access to the joy of free outdoor music whenever they wanted. And he um, funded many, many concerts in New York um, uh, to that extent. So I think it was a good commission for uh, somewhat of a character, from what I hear, but a, a very wonderful patron of the arts. So. And I have to say, my mom just turned 80 a month ago. <laughs> so birthday. I thought this would be a nice little piece to dedicate to her. <laughs> that's that's a good. Go ahead. Give her a dedication. So mom, Marge Zapata, this is for you. <laughs> In his program notes to Regrets and Resolutions, Gary Shocker explains, I wrote the regrets, imagining what it might be like to look back over 80 years. What if I'd made different choices? What if the resolutions is a forward-thinking movement, very energetic and positive? Once again, here are Kim Fleischhaus flute and Heidi Meyer piano on live from WFMT. And this is Regrets and Resolutions by Gary Shocker.
Regrets and Resolutions by Gary Shocker, as played for us here on WFMT by flutist Kim Floyshaus and pianist Heidi Meyer. And that does bring to a close a very lyrical edition of Live from WFMT. Earlier, our guests played music by Lily Boulanger, Claude Arieux, Undine Smith-Moore, William Grant Still, Otar Taktakshvili, Claude Debussy, and Rafe Vaughn Williams. We'd like to thank cellist Ruth Mutch, who joined Kim and Heidi in the work by Undine Smith-Moore, African-American Suite. Evelina Kim turned pages for Heidi tonight, and we thank her for that. Kim, where can people find out more about you? Um, and what you're up to. Okay. Well, I just wrapped up a really cool podcast that's coming out. Just re- finished recording that. It's called The Victory of Joan of Arc. The score is gorgeous by Jared de Pasquale. So you can check that out where you listen to podcasts. I'm on that. Um, and next month, I'm recording a, a piece by Don Skoog um, for soprano, cello, um, flute, uh, based on the poems of Emily Dickinson. So that should be an exciting project I'm looking forward to. Um, and then do you have a website? I do. I have a website, kimfloyshaus.com. If you can spell my name, you can you Can, can you spell out. your name? K-I-M-F-L-E-U-C-H-A-U-S. Um, and the other groups that I play with, there's links to them on that site, so um, you can check those out, too, and find out where I'll be playing next. Perhaps the Sapphire, Quid- what's the Sapphire Ensemble's website? Uh, that's Sapphire, sapphirequintet.com. Oh, I hope I said that right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Google it, our dear yes. listeners, yes. and you will find her, <laughs> and it'll be well worth the search. And if you would like to experience this evening again, you will find video of our broadcast at wfmt.com and on WFMT's Facebook and YouTube channels. We would like to give a very warm thank you to these wonderful artists who played so beautifully for us tonight. Also, thanks to Max LeBien, our recording engineer. Ella Pinsloop provides production assistance and videography as well. Gene Nemirovsky is WFMT's operations manager and audio technology whisperer. And Sam Genualdi has joined the Live from WFMT support team, and we welcome him to the ensemble. I am Louise Frank, and when Kerry Frumkin returns next Monday night at 8 o'clock, his guests will be Robert Chen, the concertmaster of the Chicago Symphony Orchestra, and his family. So be sure to tune in then for a great evening of string quartets and chamber music in performance, live from WFMT.